Good morning again. Welcome to Unity of Tacoma. This is a little bit of a redo for us. If you were with us a little earlier, you know that our live stream, we missed out on the first couple of minutes of sound. So you missed quite a bit of the service from our prayer to some of the music from Matt and Becky, as well as part of the uh, message for today. So what I plan to do today is to record this for you and this first portion and then add it to the uh, where we left off at our live service. So you don't miss out on what was happening with the live music that we had and the meditation that all those things that we did. So I will be adding this portion, this recorded portion to the live portion that was recorded earlier today. Just so you know what's going on. So if the, you are new to Unity of Tacoma, I would like to welcome you. I am so glad that you're here today. If you've visited before, we're always glad to have you back and you're always welcome here. So come back anytime. We're here every Sunday at 10 a.m. Most of the time without any glitches, but uh, sometimes that the way it goes in the Zoom world, you know, you got to be flexible. So today's prayer is writ was written by Deborah Burks. And she is one of our prayer chaplains and has been at Unity of Tacoma for several, several years. And I would like to read this affirmation and reading for today as our prayer. So let us pray. Our affirmation today is unique. I make a unique contribution to the world. As we turn within, the creative energy of spirit fills us with hope and purpose. We release negative thoughts and behavior as we awaken and express our true calling to live up to our highest potential. I am unique expression of the divine filled with passion and called to make a positive difference in the world that only I can do. I embrace my uniqueness and live authentically. I am thankful for divine ideas that inspire me to use my unique thoughts to enrich the world. And so it is, amen. And so now what I would like to do is I would like to go straight into reading the daily word for today. And our affirmation from the daily word is my spiritual eyes are open to the Christ, the risen Christ, and I am clothed with the power from on high. And the reading goes, on the Sabbath following the crucifixion, two men were traveling the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus when Jesus Christ joined them on their journey. But their eyes were unable to see him. When our spiritual eyes are closed, we fail to recognize the Christ, the risen Christ, which is within our every being. But, but he is nearer than near. For his spirit is our spirit. He is more than a guide of, for our feet. He is the way in which we walk. He is more than healing of our bodies. He is the life of our being. He is more than supply of our daily needs. He is our complete fulfillment. He is more than understanding and compassion. He is the love that makes us brothers and sisters. Just as Jesus Christ took the bread and blessed it, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him, so is the risen Christ within us, giving us the blessed bread of life. Our spiritual sight is quickened, and we know him. And the scripture lesson from the Daily Word today is Luke 24, 36. Peace be with you. So for some of you who do not know, the Easter season is more than just one day when um, the Easter bunny comes and brings you eggs. <laughs> um, Easter season goes for six Sundays in a row, sometimes more. And today is actually the third Sunday of Easter season. And we're going to talk about what happened on the road to Emmaus with two of Jesus' disciples a week after his uh, crucifixion. So that's what the Daily Word was talking about when they were talking about the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. So I'm going to summarize that story a little bit so you're in the know of what's going on and where we are in the story. So there were two disciples that were walking on a road to Emmaus, which is a city outside of Jerusalem. And they were lamenting and ruminating about the things that they had experienced within the last week. They were upset about the fact that Jesus had died 
They were worried about what was going to happen to their ministry. Were they going to be in trouble? Were they going to be arrested? Did the same thing happen to them? They had been going over that and over that and over that as they were walking down the road, heading towards the city of Emmaus. And as they were traveling on the path, a man joined them. And they, he asked them, what was the problem? What, what, what were they thinking about? And they told them the circumstances of Jesus being crucified and how their, their path and their life is uncertain and they didn't know what was going on and they were really worried and they were thinking about this the whole time. And this man gave them some advice, but they ignored it. But they let him walk along the road with them because in, it's, there's safety in numbers when you're walking outside of Jerusalem at this time in history, it wasn't safe. There were lots of bandits. So they walked together towards the city of Emmaus. When they reached Emmaus in the evening, they realized that they hadn't eaten all day. So they invited this third man to sit with them and to have a meal. When the man sat down and he picked up the bread before the meal, he broke it, blessed it, and handed it to the disciples. And in this moment, they realized that this person that had been traveling with them all day, that had given them some advice, but they ignored it. They weren't listening to him. They were too caught up in their own thoughts was Jesus himself. The Christ that they had been missing, the person they wanted to see more than anything in the world was right there in front of them the whole time. They were just too lost in their thoughts to recognize him. So today we're going to explore the second level of consciousness according to unity metaphysics, which is thought consciousness. And if you missed our talk last week on sense consciousness, you, you can go back and watch it at any time. You can go to our YouTube channel, you can go to our website, and you can click on um, messages, and uh, you can go ahead and click on that, and you can see what happened last week so you get caught up. So, But you don't need to do that in order to understand what's going on today with the topic of thought consciousness. It stands alone. And then if you want to go back and watch it, that's great. Then you'll be able to uh, be ready and willing to go into the next level, which is feeling consciousness, which happens in two weeks. So um, please feel free to do that if you would like. And this four levels of consciousness was listed and I learned about it when I read the book Metaphysic, Metaphysics Books from Unity, which was written by a minister and a teacher, Paul Hasselbeck. And the book is called Heart Centered Metaphysics. So if you're interested in learning more about the consciousness, uh, the four levels of consciousness and any other uh, metaphysical uh, teachings from Unity, please check that book out, Heart Centered Metaphysics by Paul Hasselbeck. So today we're gonna cover thought consciousness. We're gonna talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about how our thoughts work and how biased they become and how they can be wrong a lot of the times and how to go beyond this level of consciousness and move into a higher state of awareness. So that's, that's basically what we're gonna be talking about today. And by the end of this talk, I hope you'll learn how to use your thoughts in a way to transcend your current consciousness and the thoughts that you have, especially the negative ones, and move toward a higher state of awareness and experience. In the meantime, as we transition into my talk, I'd like to be a little transparent here because um, I want to tell you a little something about myself that a lot of people don't know, except for those that are immediately close to me. I hope you're okay with that. Um, I pride myself as being someone who works towards paying attention to all the details in my work. I pay attention to the nuances and the conversations that are being had. I pay attention to other people and their stories. I'm aware of all of their needs and I work really hard to make sure that they're comfortable and I'm always ready to serve. And in essence, I'm really into other people's details. That is my expertise. I, I'm focused on what other people need. But I wanna share a little secret about myself. Um, it's something that I work on, something I'm very aware of, but I'm not really into paying attention, attention to my own details. And God bless my husband because he's constantly finding my keys, finding my glasses, searching for my phone or fill in the blank. I am not paying attention to what's in front of me because I am always looking elsewhere. I'm looking to serve. I'm looking to improve myself. I'm looking to 
um, plan and set goals, but I'm not in the present moment at that time. And that is where I stay. And, and it's it's something that I, I struggle with, something that I work really hard to try to do. But when I'm home and I'm doing my own thing, I'm not paying attention to things. And as a result of this tendency of mine, I have I reprimand myself. I say negative things to myself. I say, how could I leave my keys in the mailbox, which I did last week? Or how do I lose my glasses all the time when I know they're on my head? That's where they always end up. My inner dialogue doesn't support my successes. It doesn't focus on the fact that I'm really good at all these other things. It hones in instead on my failures. And then it starts to say negative things about me. I don't know, if, have you ever done that to yourself? And what I need to do is I need to get myself out of that thought consciousness and become come to a space where I am nicer and kinder to myself. I need, I'm completely aware of my tendency to be absent-minded in my own environment. And, but I need to be able to forgive myself. And I need to be able to move on in order to get to another level where I can work on that. And that can be something that I continue to work on. And being negative isn't helpful. It's not something that is going to help me in any way. It's not a positive thing in my life. I want to be able to think about something positive and be able to set goals so I can get to a space where I'm not doing that anymore, that I don't have this as a, a tendency that I know that I have. And the disciples were doing a very similar thing. They were walking down the road. They were thinking about their what happened. They were worrying about what was going to happen. And they weren't staying present. And they didn't see the teacher that they were missing the whole time was walking right with them down the road. They were not aware of where what was happening in the environment because they were too busy and they were too lost in thought. And they missed the opportunity to celebrate was right in front of them, the divinity that was walking down the road with them the whole time. And they were stuck in this thought consciousness and they just couldn't get out of it. And I think that's a very human condition that we can relate to. I think many people do that to themselves, even if they're not fully aware of it. And according to Unity Metaphysics, thought consciousness is the second of four levels of consciousness that we humans experience. It helps us to arrange our, our ideas in order to communicate better, make sense of what's happening in our environment, and basically be able to maneuver within our world. We develop this skill when we're about six or seven years old, and we start to use thoughts in order to create a story about what's happening in our lives, about ourselves, about the people around us, what's going on. And that story, that narrative becomes the dialogue that we that we talk about in our minds. It's something that we uh, ruminate about and think about and um, we problem solve and we move forward with that, with that consciousness. And this way of thinking is absolutely natural and it's an automatic part of the brain. It happens in the frontal lobe, which is the largest part of the brain. And it wants to label and learn and reorient and, and direct and problem solve. And it's, it's super able to do all those things and it wants to think and think and think some more. That's its job. Like the heartbeat beats, the brain thinks. And although thoughts are important to really, in order to get things done, to be able to maneuver in our world and to live in our world and be successful, to problem solve, to think, to discern fact from fiction, our thoughts are often misinformed, they're wrong. We believe that we come up with thoughts that are correct. That is what our brain is supposed to do, but that's not the case. The brain is often wrong. And these errors in thinking um, happen a lot and they're called cognitive bias or cognitive fallacies. I would like to cover a few of cognitive biases that the disciples had gone through that day as they were walking through uh, down, down the road to Emmaus. And there are three of them that I'm gonna cover today. There are so many more that um, I could cover, but these three I'll specifically cover right now. The first one the disciples were um, dealing with was attentional bias. And if you're unfamiliar with that kind of bias, that means that you, they were only paying attention to certain things in their envi environments and ignoring other things. And we do that often with people that we, uh, we like or politicians that we see. Uh, there are certain things that we really like about them, but we know that there are negative things too, but we just ignore that. 
we just ignore that. We pay attention to those things that we want to pay attention. They confirm what we know about that. We just, that's a cognitive, that's attentional bias. That's a cognitive bias. And they, the disciples were doing that. They, they didn't see anything else, but what they knew about Jesus. They knew that, that this man couldn't be Jesus. He was just walking down the road. Their Jesus was no longer with them. And they only paid attention to that and they didn't see the divinity walking with them. So that is attentional bias. That's when you pay more attention to what you believe to be true. And all of us do it. We, it's, it's a common bias. The second bias I'll talk about will be um, confirmational bias. And that is when we look at things and we pay attention to things that confirm that we are correct. We don't, if somebody gives us information that doesn't go along with what we believe, we will throw it away. That is completely not relevant. And so in addition to attentional bias that the disciples were dealing with, they were also dealing with confirmation bias because they knew what they knew what they knew and the information that was coming to them, they may have been aware, maybe this guy was divine or maybe they just forgot or ignored it. But they, the information that was confirming for them was that their, their uh, Jesus was gone and he was no longer with them. So that was confirmational bias. The final bias we'll talk about is called the framing effect. And this is what happened when the disciples noticed that Jesus was actually him in the very end. It's when our minds uh, take, get a different conclusion when we're presented with new information. So when we, and when it's in a different frame of reference, that's why it's called the framing effect, then we know, then we start to see, oh my gosh, that's true. So when he broke the bread and he handed it to the disciples, that's when they noticed, oh my gosh, this is a different way of looking at this guy. Yes, this is the Christ standing in front of us, sitting in front of us. So this is what the framing effect is. So you can see that there are these three, only these three I'm going to talk about, but there are several other biases that I'm sure that were happening throughout this process because it was, it's an error in our thinking. Even though we believe it's true, it's really not. So I Googled the topic, I went back to my textbooks and I counted that there were 50 of them just off the top of my head that I could think of that, that could be part of the biases that we deal with on a daily basis. And we all do this. And it's not, it's not a shortcoming, it's just the way our brains work. We, we put them in little neat little packages so we remember things and that's how we do it. So if our minds get wrong a lot, and they do, as I said, and cognitive scientists will say that, you know, you're not always correct. Witnesses, for example, say that they remember certain things about an event, and oftentimes they're 40 to 50% wrong the first time they think of it, and they become more wrong as, they, as time goes on because the brain only takes in a certain amount of information and it has to get rid of, has to defrag and get rid of all of its stuff. So um, yeah, cognitive bias is really important. And if you have those cognitive biases, then you need to be aware of them. And how do you become aware of these biases? Well, you have to become the witness. And the first time I ever heard that term, the witness, I was watching, it was oh, 20 years ago, maybe, I was watching a talk by Deepak Chopra. And he was trying to explain what the observer was, what the witness was. And he said to them, just sit in, the, sit in the position of meditation and I want you to pay attention to your breath. And as you're breathing in and out, I want you to pay attention to the person that's pay attention to your breath. And then when you start looking at it that way, you're like, oh my gosh, I can watch myself, watch myself breathe. And so that's when you get into a space of what um, cognitive scientists call and psychologists call metacognition. And you become the witness of your own experience that you could stand back and you're able to be mindful of that. And we had that exercise last week with sense consciousness. We were able to watch how our senses came um, and how we interpreted our senses and how they came into envi our environment. But with this metacognition then, we are able to watch our thoughts and to catch ourselves when we get to a point where we're using that bias. And if we come from that space of, space of witnessing all the time, then we can transcend those negative thoughts that are in our, in our brains that are moving around. And we can get to a point where we're in a feeling consciousness where we're feeling joy and positivity instead of that lower energy level of negativity. So 
in order to move beyond your cognition and your thoughts and that circle around in your brain, there are certain ways that you can do it. There are several different ways, but one of my favorite ways is to just use questioning, Socratic questioning, to be able to figure out if what you're thinking is actually true, because you can become the witness of your own thoughts. You can sit there and you can ask these questions of yourself, and I'm going to walk through that, and I'm going to use my own um, experience with my negativity towards myself as I teach you these different questions that you can ask yourself to get yourself out of that negative frame of reference and up into a higher level of consciousness. So these questions, there are five of them and, and they're kind of vague. They're not always necessary because you can, but you can get to a point where you can look at yourself and say, wow, maybe there is a different way of doing. So the first portion I'm going to say is when you have a thought that's negative in your mind, I would like you to look at it and ask yourself, is that true? It seems like a basic question. What is that true? Can I, can I say that what I'm thinking about myself, so myself is I think that I'm, I'm a bad person because I, I'm get, uh, I get uh, distracted and I'm not able to keep on task. Is that make me a bad person? And, and the second question, is there, is there evidence that I am a bad, bad person because of this? And absolutely, there's no evidence to suggest that because I do this, I'm a bad person. It does mean that, I could, that it's something I could focus on something I could work on, but that doesn't make me a bad person per se. So there's not really any evidence to say that I'm a bad person there. And then the, the third way of looking at it is, so what if I'm wrong? Maybe what if I'm not a bad person? And then how would that make me feel if I weren't a bad person? Well, that would make me feel great. That would make me feel like I had some hope and some positivity and that I could move forward and I could find out whether or not there's a, a solution to this problem. And then finally you ask yourself, so now that you know that you could be wrong and there is an alternative to your thought process, then what are you, how are you going to use it? How are you going to pursue this? And so I can go forward and I say, well, I can look at the situation. I can figure out that um, I could be wrong. And I'm, the evidence suggests that I could be very wrong. And so, I'm going to try to find a solution to my problem so I can start really setting goals for myself and being really positive about going forward instead of thinking automatically that I am a negative or bad person for being absent minded. So this questioning helps us get use questions in order to get out of our, our thought process and to move forward and ultimately move into a different level of consciousness. In essence, we become the witness of our own thoughts and our own experiences. And from this divine space, the space of Christ consciousness is what they would say in, met in unity metaphysics, where you're in the divine space, you are looking at yourself, thinking these things and then interpreting things. So you're just stepping away and stepping away and stepping away until you're at a point of consciousness where you have transcended yourself. And so that's how you go from sense consciousness to think consciousness to feeling consciousness and to super consciousness, which we'll cover in a couple of weeks. So how to transcend thought process, that your thought processes is not easy. It's something that we always deal with. There's always going to be a time where your thoughts are going to run. And if you've ever been in meditation and your thoughts come into your mind and you're like, I'm thinking again, just remember that is what the brain is supposed to do. Like the heart, it beats. The brain thinks. So remember, when you're in that space, you can transcend those thoughts by letting, becoming the witness and letting them go. Letting them go into the world. Or if you can't get rid of that negativity, then start questioning yourself. So you can let it go. So you can move into a higher state of consciousness because you're not stuck at being negative towards yourself. The goal is to be able to set a higher level of consciousness, which happens when you get into the feeling of positivity and support and love and kindness. Those are the places that you want to get to. And you can get that if you can transcend your thoughts and move into a space of feeling and emotion that's positive. So all you have to do is to be aware and take a moment. And like the disciples, when they were finally, they got this revelation in the end, 
you can also get that revelation by thinking about your thoughts and saying, you know what? That's not me. That's not what I want for myself. I want to think differently. And then you create your own reality by, by changing your thoughts. And then by changing your thoughts, you move into a different plane of, of awareness. And that's our goal with all of these four consciousnesses I'm going through right now. We want to transcend each and every one till we get to the divine and the Christ consciousness. So we're able to look at the world and ourselves in a different and divine way. So I crammed a lot into a 25 minute talk, but I have um, Matt and Becky that will be coming back with a wonderful song. And then we're going to have a meditation that's going to get you into a space where you're able to observe your thoughts and you can let them go. So it'll be just a second, but they'll give us a wonderful music and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Perfect. Beautiful. Thank you. So I'd like to get into a position of meditation, whatever comfortable position that is for you, whether you're sitting down or lying down, sitting on the floor, cross-legged or your feet on, flat on the floor. And I'd like you to close your eyes and just bring your awareness inside of your body and feel your breath move in and out, in and out. You can focus your attention on your, your diaphragm moving up and down, or you can bring your awareness to the breath coming in and out of your nose. But just bring your awareness to your breath and just sit with that for just a minute as you get quiet. Just breathe. And inevitably, as we sit here, thoughts are going to arise. And that's the brain's job to think. It could be a single thought. It could be a couple of different thoughts. It could be fast or slow. It could have emotions attached to them, different ones. One emotion, one could have a sad emotion. One could have a happy emotion. Or maybe it feels like it's a complete rainstorm of thoughts. But there's one right after the other, right after the other. And it may be a fast pace, it may be a slow pace, and it maybe it makes you feel anxious. No matter what you're experiencing in this moment, just notice that they're there. It's just your mind, it's it wants your attention. And just let it be. 
You don't have to follow it in any direction. You can just let it move just like it's supposed to. You do not have to attach yourself to it. And as you're sitting here, noticing your thoughts go by, I'd like you to identify with just one particular thought that's going through your mind. Maybe it's a visual thought where there are pictures attached of an experience that you had or that something you've seen. Or maybe it's a thought that you need to get things done when you are list done listening today and there are things that you have to do this afternoon. Or maybe you're worrying about something that you have or something that you've done or something that you need to do. It could be a memory that's happy. They don't have to be negative. Whatever thoughts are going in and out of your mind, I'd like you to attach to one. And when you do, I want you to imagine that it is floating above your head. That it's not part of you, that it is away from your body, away from your mind. And you see it kind of like a cloud floating in the sky. It might be in the form of words or maybe a picture or even like a, a mini movie. And whatever this thought is, it's floating above you. And as you look at this thought that's floating above you, I want you to encircle it in a bubble. Just kind of gently put it inside this bubble. And this floating bubble is is encapsulating this thought and it's hovering right above you. Notice that you've become the observer now of this thought. It's no longer part of you. And take a moment to recognize the emotions that might be attached to this thought and make sure they're also in this bubble. It could be happiness, it could be stress, it could be fear, it could be love. Watch this part of your thought and the emotion encapsulated in the bubble. And does it change color? Does it become pink? Does it become blue? Does it become dark? Does it become sparkly? What does it look like when the, the emotion is infused with this thought that's in, that's encapsulated in this bubble. And as you really look at it and notice what it looks like, I would like you to take a moment and just let it go. Just like you would let go of a balloon, let it go and watch it disappear into the distance. Just watch it disappear and observe that your body is still here. That that thought, that emotion attached to the thought is not part of who you are. You are still here and you are observing that motion, that thought leave your body and you have officially become the witness of the observer of your own self. I'd like you to continue this practice for just a few minutes, just Notice the thoughts that come to your mind. And as they come into your mind, I would like you to start discerning between them. If they are positive and something you would like to keep into your life, when you encapsulate them into the bubble, I'd like you to imagine that there's this basket sitting next to you and you take this wonderful, beautiful thought infused with wonderful emotion and just stick it in that basket next to you. And the other unwanted thoughts, I would like you to have go through the same exercise of letting them go and watching them disappear. Save the ones you want in your basket and let the other ones go. And we'll sit here for just a moment in silence as you go through that process.
if you find yourself getting lost in your thoughts or losing this vision or this exercise, I'd just like to bring your awareness back to your breath to recenter yourself. And then you can start again. There's really no right or wrong way to do this exercise. It's a practice of becoming the observer to be remain the witness where your thoughts don't get away from you and that your emotions don't overwhelm you. And as you let the last emotion go or you put it in the basket next to you, I'd like you to bring your attention back to your breath. Recentering yourself into your body. Feeling the air coming in and out of your body again. And as you do so, I would like you to look in the basket next to you, that imaginary basket that's sitting there. And I would like you to look at all the emotions and thoughts that you had that were positive. Even if there's only one, one single bubble inside your basket, that's something to be grateful for, something to be happy about. And as you master this, you can continue to observe your thoughts and they do not have to get away from you. They do not have to be negative. Although you will have negative thoughts, but you don't have to hold on to them. You can just let them go and you can use this meditation anytime you'd like to be able to do that. Take another deep breath in. Let it out and know that it's your life and you can manifest what you would like by using your thoughts in the way that you would like to. You're in charge of that. And so it is. And so Matt and Becky are going to come back and sing us another song. Mm -hmm. I'm walking away from 
along the path that led me to confusion. Today is the day I walk away. I'm walking away from the less than that held me for so long. Today is the day I walk away. Today is the day I walk away. That is awesome. That was such a perfect song to end this out. That's cool. Thank you so much. I would like to thank Matt and Becky for being here today and providing us the best music for our talk today. Thank you so much. And I'd also like to thank our sound tech who is behind the scenes so often every single Sunday and you don't see him and you don't hear him. But I want to thank Kamai for all of his work because he is appreciated and necessary. And without him, we wouldn't be here on Sunday morning. So thank you, Kamai, I really appreciate you. I'd also like to talk a little bit about um, what's happening with Governor Inslee and his decision to, in Pierce County, we have gone back to phase two, where we're only supposed to meet together at 25% capacity. So as we move forward and as things change in the in legis as in the capital and what's going on in our state and in our county, we will let you know as to when we're going to be opening up in person again. But in the meantime, we're still going to meet online every Sunday at 10 a.m. And you can join us and you can also go back and see any of our other services and anything else that we have on our website. You go to unityoftacoma.org and you can find out what's going on with us. You can also sign up to get a newsletter that would give you updates on what's happening with us by going to our contact page and filling out uh, the contact form and say that you would like to subscribe to the newsletter. That would be awesome. And we try to send out as much information as possible when we get it. So we'll keep you informed as things change. We are also having a spring diaper drive. We do it in honor of Mother, Mother's and Father's Day. And so you are welcome to get diapers of any size. They are, um, we will donate them to the food bank. You can get, somebody asked me if they could use things like baby wipes and things. I am sure they could use those things as well. They will be donated to the food bank. And so they can use whatever you would like to donate. And we will take that for you to the food bank. But this is a tradition at Unity of Tacoma to be able to uh, accept diapers and donate them to the, um, to the food bank and it's something they do every year. So we're excited to be doing that again this year. Next week, we have Cindy Akana and Christine S. Young as the, Cindy Akana will be the speaker, Christine S. Young will be the musician. So please join us next week as we go through this again. And I'm looking forward to uh, Cindy's message. I will be back two weeks from now on May 2nd where we'll continue this series about um, consciousness and we'll be talking about feeling consciousness then and my musician at that time will be Gene Mann. So if you, like I said, missed anything from before, if you came in late for this message, you can go to our website and pr press the area that says Sunday messages and you can rewatch this whenever you would like. And please share on Facebook and Instagram and let us know what we're doing here because we have a lot going on. Even though we're not meeting together, we're still doing a lot of stuff. So please share. And I would like to end our service today by doing a benediction and then uh, Matt and Becky will sing us out. And today I would like to use the prayer for protection as everyone starts to get out of their house and get out into the beautiful sun. And there are so many people I was driving down the road and I was saying the prayer of protection yesterday to myself because there were so many people on the road. I would like to use it today as we move forward and into our week. And the prayer of protection goes, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. So thank you, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful week. 
and Matt and Becky are going to sing us out. wonderful week and we'll see you back next week Sunday at 10 a.m. Goodbye.